All right, everyone. The other day, Donald Trump did what he is perhaps most notable for, and this time he didn't need Twitter to do it, which is that he conned the entire left into uh, <laughs> spreading his message for him and self-owning in the process. On Truth Social the other day, he posted World War Three. That's it. WW3. Five characters is what he posted. There's no further context of any kind whatsoever. Now, he chose Easter to do this, I think, for a reason, because then it'll spread further as the false indignation of people that have TDS anyway forces them to remark upon it. You'll notice that all the old uh, Trump reply guys from Twitter, they still lurk on Truth Social habitually. And so I guess he's gotten it into his mind. He doesn't really need to use Twitter at all. I think that's a bad idea because then uh, a lot of it, uh, you get a bunch of outrage takes and interpretation by leftoids before uh, it filters down to other people, unless they're core Trump fans, in which case they're part of a totally separate echo chamber from people that are follow following the Krasensteins for anything other than satirical purposes or uh, chuckling at their stupidity. Um, but he conned them. Now it's tre uh, trending, and not just on Twitter. Uh, and people are, you know, wh whirlwinding themselves. The problem is that it immediately gives the opportunity for people who have maybe more attention spam to fact check the current diplomatic and socio-political system in the world, the geopolitical stances that nations are taking, and the problems really that we've had under the Biden stewardship, uh, and contrast and compare with the Trump administration where things were demonstrably different. Although, I would note, there is currently a level of gaslighting involving Blinken and others, especially with regards to the end of Afghanistan occupation when the U.S. withdrew. They're still trying to gaslight and pretend that somehow Trump was to fault for what happened under the Biden administration. Despite the fact that he owns it because he modified the terms of the withdrawal deal and made no particular effort to withdraw uh, any goods from the area before uh, allowing the area to collapse. Uh, the bravado that he showed in his uh, phone call to the then president of Afghanistan was quite telling. I noticed that the legacy media doesn't ever mention that in the, the terms, in the scope of uh, the withdrawal from Afghanistan. Fox occasionally will mention it in a single sentence. Everyone else completely ignores it. Yeah, hey, I know that you're not really positioned to uh, defend against the Taliban pending this withdrawal, but just pretend. We need to maintain order for right now. No, we're trying to scrape something together. That was basically the gist of, <laughs> of his aid to the people of Afghanistan for several months, lying to them openly. Now, here's the con job. Trump has just trolled them, uh, epically. Uh, I, I know some people say, well, you're part of uh, Cult 45. How dare you praise something that Trump does? He's just a loser and, and all of that stuff. You've been hearing that from the demoralization shills, the David Brock types, and some of the latent TDS sufferers as well now for several years. But it is. Uh, it, it is a troll. What he got is for people to inject that concept, mimetically, by the way, into public discourse so that people are talking about World War III. They're wondering what Trump meant. They're talking about diplomacy and stuff. Here's the comparison. Under Donald Trump, we had no invasion of Ukraine. Um, Putin didn't dare at that time. You can, and some people will cope and they'll say, well, it's because Trump was his puppet. He didn't need to. What better time to have invaded than when a puppet is ruling the United States and isn't going to do anything about it? Would have made it an awful lot easier for the Russians now, wouldn't it? They would have conquered everything up to Kiev by now if that were true. The reason that they didn't invade was because they realized there would actually be a response. Trump, despite popular notions among the left, did not weaken NATO. He attempted to force NATO members to actually pony up the pre-agreed upon amount of their budget they were supposed to be putting towards military and defense in the first place. That doesn't sound like someone that wants to weaken NATO. I, I know where it comes from, though. It comes from, they're literally trusting John Bolton, the most pro-war person in the world. In Bolton's book, he makes the claim that Trump was uh, wondering about the possibility of leaving NATO. Um, he has no source for this. The, the claim is, is false. It's defamatory in nature. Again, you know, proof is in the pudding. The actions and words that Trump used while he was in office, they, they really paint a different tale than the one that Bolton attempts to paint in his stupid book. And that's why he also mumbled about maybe running for the presidency before quickly deciding otherwise. He just wanted a few more book sales. 
He got briefly into the news cycle, and then when it fell through, he realized, well, there's no reason to keep up with this shtick. I'm clearly not running. I have no support, and it's not helping me sell more copies because nobody even uh, acknowledges the fact that I might jump into the race. They're too busy talking about Trump, DeSantis, and Nikki Haley. And so he decided to come out and get his last gasp of relevancy to sell those extra 50 copies that he probably sold by saying, no, I'm actually not getting in at this time. Anyway, that's just part of it. It's more than Ukraine, although Trump did well in that. And of course, now Ukraine has been invaded. It was also invaded under, uh, who was it? Barack Obama, the mentor of Joe Biden. Interesting how there was a gap between those two presidencies where things there were seemingly calm. We had the opportunity at that time to do something permanent uh, with regards to diplomacy with Russia and chose not to. Uh, <laughs> had Trump actually made a serious attempt, he probably just would have been lied to by his Ukrainian envoy like he was the one in Syria. Bringing us to number two, Syria. Syria is currently uh, suffering airstrikes from the Israelis. Uh, Israel has hauled off because of rocket fire from Gaza and Hezbollah and all these things in the areas. So slowly going mad. Part of that, I think, is because Netanyahu wants a conflict in order to distract from his own problems in the country. I think that's being designed by elements of the Israeli government more than anything else, let's face it. That's why you hardline a handful of people that have locked themselves inside of a mosque that the IDF isn't supposed to get near in the first place. It's supposed to be uh, Jordanian troops, I believe, was, or was it Lebanese government troops that are supposed to guard the Temple Mount as far as this agreement and he decided to send in the IDF instead, thus inflaming tensions to the point where even the Lebanese and Jordanian governments are telling you to knock it off. I think Netanyahu wants that. Did this happen under Trump? No, you got the Abraham Accords. You got recognition of Israel by a bunch of Islamic states in that general region of the world, including Sudan. That, that helps to de-escalate things a little bit now, doesn't it? What about Syria proper itself? Uh, when Trump first took command when he was first elected. Syria was a mess. There's like five different factions all fighting. Now, where is ISIS? When's the last time they did anything significant? They were running roughshod over the whole area until about a year into Trump's term, and then all of a sudden they started to disappear because the United States realized, hey, we don't have to deal with this. This is effectively a Russian ally. It's clear Assad is not going to fall, but we're just causing more problems by arming the FSA. Let's draw back and tell the Russians, go at it. Let's let them exhaust some manpower and resources for a change. And they went in along with the Iranians and they beat the shit out of ISIS. Now the only place that's left that ISIS has a significant control in is Libya. Oh, who ruined that? Oh, that was under Obama too with Hillary Clinton. Are you noticing a pattern here? And that's not all. What about Korea? Under Donald Trump, we had reproachment with North Korea, and very wisely at the time, and I strongly supported this. It was a wise move, and, and, and it speaks to his larger understanding of East Asian uh, politics and, and boardroom sort of shit. After the initial reproachment, where Trump bellied up to the bar, he used it as, as an excuse to do this. He waited until Kim Jong-un basically insulted him in the U.S. Then he responds in kind, and he hardballs them. The North Koreans go silent for a while, and then they came forward to approach and said, well, no, no, we weren't really insulting you. We look forward to meeting you, actually. You're a great guy. So he goes on a charm offensive. He got a meeting with Kim Jong-un, first president to step foot across the DMZ, and they're planting peace trees and all that very symbolic stuff. But it did lead to the repatriation of human remains, the removal of landmines, the removal of border propaganda broadcasts on both sides of the DMV, the removal of some of the border stations that are militarized, the pulling back of some of North Korean and South Korean forces, uh, and then the ROK took the four. Trump probably said behind the scenes, look, now it's your turn because, you know, we've got the ball rolling, but really this doesn't directly involve the United States other than as a guarantor of your sovereignty. Diplomatically, the ROK has to deal with it. The ROK then went forward, and for a couple of years, things were going smoothly. They restarted cross-border cooperation on business projects, and again, more repatriation, removal of landmines, which occasionally, during flood season, wash down the fucking river and destroy farms and shit, by the way. Uh, you had a lot of progress. The second that Biden takes control, oh, North Korea starts saying, hey, we're going to build more nukes now. We're going to build another line, a uh, series of missile systems. Hey, by the way, we're going to put nukes on submarines and turn them into tsunami machines. And then they start firing off a bunch of missiles over Japanese airspace. There had been a good long hiatus of such activity, you'll note, under the latter half of Trump's first term. That's why I hope he gets a second. Things could not be more stark. 
when we're regarding the state of the world insofar as like the likelihood of World War III, nuclear war, major conflict and stuff. Under Trump, things were generally peaceful. The United States foreign policy, we had no new wars. We had the de-escalation of several existing conflicts. We had the strengthening of the U.S. military. You didn't have the wokening in the military going on like it is now. Biden inverted that. Now he's weakening the U.S. military where for, while forcing uh, the world into a situation where there might actually be a major conflict that we have no choice but to participate in. Not, not a, 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 a stupid war of, hey, you know, we're going to go and do regime change in Guyana or something, but as in, hey, a NATO member just got attacked and they've invoked articles and we don't have a choice but to get involved because they're part of this expansive alliance. And you're depleting the military while you're doing this, lowering their standards and, and wokeifying it and making it stupid, making it fucking bullshit, which should not be happening. Trump has conned them into showing their weakness. And in some cases, showing their love for war. Some of these people, their reaction is, yeah, oh, sounds pretty good. Yeah, oh, fuck, Joe, fuck Putin. Yeah, oh. yeah, that'd be really fun. You see, you're overlooking something. In a symmetric war, the U.S. military would obliterate the Russians. We would have massive air and sea superiority. Even we could, NATO would be involved, so it's all of Europe curb stomping them too. See, there's one little problem. Russia has thousands and thousands of nuclear weapons. If you corner them, if you beat them too hard, they probably press the little red button. This is the problem of the grand chessboard writ large, by the way. Trump seemed to understand such things. Joey doesn't understand jack shit. And the reason why this happens as well is because currently the United States doesn't have a leader. It has a figurehead. It has a steward who does not make his own decisions, even about what kind of ice cream he eats the next time he's taking a photo op at Jill and Jane's fucking waffle cone stand. He doesn't make that decision. He's probably got an earpiece whispering to him the entire day, telling him which put, uh, foot to put forward next, because otherwise he might trip and fall. I wonder why the things that are happening in the world today are happening. <laughs> what a troll. That's about all. Peace out.